Exogonor sent me a video. Exogonor sent me a video about our favorite game developer. About everyone's favorite game developer. You know who I'm talking about? Thor. We're talking about Thor. <laughs> Pirate Software, the streamer who faked his game dev career. Yeah, he literally sent me this like half an hour before stream started. And he said, I thought this was just a hater video, but he does have better points. Some I was wondering about myself, honestly. That's what Exion told me about this video. And I was like, Yo, I'm gonna watch this on stream. Back and front? I don't know. I don't know. Personally, we all love Thor here, right? There's no way. That's what I'm thinking. But I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to listen. We're open minded here. He's gonna take you back to the past to play the shitty games that suck. <laughs> And they shut it down 10 years later. On March 31st, 2024, Ubisoft shut down the game's servers, rendering the game unplayable. Which is normal. If you're going to be buying an online-only game, that means it can only run when it's online. And if the servers need to shut down in the future, far in the future, it makes sense to me for the access to that game to be cut. Jason Thor okay. Hall is a 36-year-old man with 20 was, years of game. That was a quote, I believe, off of uh, one of his latest videos in regards of the um, subscription, not subscription, uh, of the uh, si signatures uh, gathering f uh, of the EU where uh, a signature thing uh, was being driven out for people in the EU. Uh, uh, but freaking as we made a video on it called Gamers Raise Up or something. Development experience and a few recent controversies. Gaming industry for about 20 years. 20 years. Offensive security expert for 20 years. 20 years. Been in the game industry for 20 years. 20 years. 20 years in the game industry. I've been in the game industry for 10 years. I've been in the industry for 18 20 years. Okay. Yeah. I started this industry 10 years ago at 21, 2019. I mean, depends on which industry he's referring to. Is he talking about development or IT? Because he was IT on at first, wasn't he? It came just on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mentioned you too. 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. What was the furry? It's very clear that nobody involved in the FAQ actually makes games. I've had a 20-year career in the games industry spanning from QA, engineering, IT, and red team. Okay. These 20 years are a fundamental pillar of his streamer brand as a grizzled veteran who quit the AAA industry to try and make indie games. He provides support for his arguments and to sell himself to his audience. To put it simply, he has 20 years of experience and you do not. Okay. And? Okay, and? Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna let him The cook. years change a little bit depending on if he counts his secret work as a furry. The age of 21 is when he started at Blizzard, and 16 is when he started working on furry art and is his current start of his career from the games industry. He's 30. Okay, is this made by Thor or what? Like, I, I, he's a furry? Okay, so what? He's six now, so 20 years of experience in the games industry would put him at 16. Let's... How old is Thor? Thor looks older than 36. I'm sorry, but Thor looks way older than 36. I'm gonna do a fact check on this. I'm gonna do a fact check. How old is Pirate Software? Pirate Software was born in 1987. Can someone do the math? A... Uh, it's 37 now. 37 this year. <laughs> no, no, 37 years. Quickly go over his 20 years in the industry before getting into how he became a controversial figure. I mean, to be fair... Chat. To be fair... There's a lot of furries in the IT industry. 
There's a lot of furries in the IT industry, and they have started early. They have started early, and it's very believable that furries start at 16 years old and younger. And younger. The story of Pirate Software actually starts with his dad, Joey Hall, one of the yeah, founding sure. members of Blizzard. <laughs> that, that is literally Thor's dad, according to Thor anyway. Who started working there when the company had only 10 employees. He created the cinematics department and worked as the director. His dad was even the model for the fat nerd from South Park. No, that's not a joke. Joey is a uniquely accomplished developer who loved his work at the small company known as Blizzard. He's been a small indie company been around forever developing Super Nintendo games. He's an old guy in the industry and still working. He works at Jagex right now, actually. I don't know what that Jason's is. Jason's career in the industry began with his identity as a furry. Furries are notorious for spending money on anything and everything related to their favorite animal. And he found... <laughs> okay. <laughs> furry, found ferrets? The market here from okay. roughly 2004 to 2008. How we lost our craft due to an accidental death during solar plan ways to keep, okay? In stock and ready to ship dog suit. Okay. First up for the new interim ferret room. Okay, he's rescuing ferrets. Okay. And the first four years of his life in the games industry, some of which was still in high school, he scripted furry skins for an artist and sold it on a storefront. Okay. A and he claims he was working as a freelance security researcher out of high school. I don't fault him for this. I think anyone who does furry art is morally obligated to lie about it. This also explains his natural inclination. He's adding, hating on him, obviously, but there are value arguments as well, towards okay? Ferrets. His furry name was Moldavius Fig Tree for anyone doing their Twitch streamer trivia. For anyone doing their Twitch. Being attracted to ferrets is. Bro, that. that Bro, that's a little bit of a reach, yeah. I, that's kind of disgusting to make this kind of reach just because you're a furry. Or just, let's say he would be a furry. Doesn't mean he's attracted to uh, fucking animals. Can we please differentiate between furries and bestiality? Bro. Streamer trivia. Sadly, it was not meant to last. What is this? I made a druid named Penis Cut. company while you sat on your ass keep up the good work then i intend to continue sitting on my ass is what the other guy says i'm far too cheap to buy a new tablet right now you're an ass you really are you don't give a shit about this anymore do you you realize everyone else in the company is telling me to just drop your ass right now even grylor did i re really in the first place money is nice and all but mostly i built because I like doing it. What was this about? What is this about? <laughs> fig tree for anyone doing their Twitch streamer trivia. <coughs> Sadly, it was not meant to last. As he was not able to maintain a relationship with his artist and business partner, the business dissolved on bad terms sometime in 2008. With only a high school education and his work as a furry artist, Jason was having a bit of trouble finding stable work, but he managed to use his natural marketing ability to begin his career at Blizzard in 2009 alongside his dad, who okay. at the time was working as a creative director. Sure. To clarify, a QA tester plays a game to make sure that the game works as intended and provides um, support after release, filing bug reports and showing developers how to reproduce the issue. QA stands for quality assurance, by the issues way. So they can so, fix them, yeah. and they rate them on a scale of how the they break the game to just how common they are as well. Now, I bring this up because Thor started as a QA tester, but his early work at Blizzard also involved detecting and banning botters or rule breakers on games such as World of Warcraft and Overwatch. Okay. Paul moved up the ladder quickly at Blizzard, 
In less than two years, he went from QA tester to teaching his own team of security experts to being a senior engineer. Much of his work involved writing Python scripts. His scripting helped detect when users made disallowed or inconsistent actions so Blizzard could ban their accounts. This work banning users likely influenced his controversial belief that moderators should be compensated for their work instead of just getting it for free through child labor. Going on to his security work, he uh, won three gold. What? Compensate. This work banning users likely influenced his controversial belief that moderators should be compensated for their work instead of just getting it for free through child labor. Huh? Why was Pokemon showed on there? Literally, why? I need the subtitles. Hall moved I need up the, the ladder quickly at Blizzard. In less than two years, he went from QA tester to teaching his own team of security experts to being a senior engineer. Much of his work involved writing Python scripts. His scripting helped detect when users made disallowed or inconsistent actions so Blizzard could ban their accounts. This yeah. work banning users likely influenced his controversial belief that moderators should be compensated for their work instead of just getting it for free through child labor. Moderators should be compensated. Almost all companies companies think that moderators and GMS don't need a salary. Oh, game mods. Okay, okay, okay. So like in-game mods, like the moderators th that would show up like in WoW back in the day. Yeah, no, I think that should be be compensated too that is a good take that should be compensated work and like it's it's voluntary work it but it shouldn't be if they're working for a game company so why am i not getting paid be because we're not a game company should be compensated for their work instead of just getting it for free through child labor. Going on to his security work, he uh, won three gold medals for hacking in 2015, 16, and 17, one of which is in 2016 for being a part of the first team to solve a yearly hacking puzzle challenge. He believes these black badges can open up doors at any companies. Okay. In 2015 and 16, he joined the Council of Nine team, which for some reason has 11 or 12 members, depending on the year. They won the Badge Puzzle Challenge. In 2017, his Psychoholics team won the Social Engineering Challenge. Quote from Engadget. During the challenge, the would-be freakers had to do more than just make phone calls or member dial tones. They also had to figure out voicemail passwords. One was an employee's birth date. Another was the last four digits of an employee ID. Sadly, these are typical mistakes made by actual people in the real world. That alone should frighten the security team of any company. And the dude in the video calls a chat level, which shows he's against not paying mods. And also, fun fact, mods are often underage. No, now you're just getting me confused again. He just said it in a snarky tone. Yeah, why did he say it in a snarky tone? Bro, moving on. Later, in 2016, he and his father switched jobs to Amazon's lumberyard department. His experiences at Blizzard were mixed. Thor loved working at the company for his six years there, but noted that sexual harassment was common. Eventually, he quit over disagreements in game design and his desire sure. to work on his own indie game company. Sure. He believed that users should own games they buy. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's, I think, a very normal take. At this point, his career starts to diverge from his father's. Joey Hall had his own reasons for quitting Blizzard, which... Like, of course, game... Like, of 
course you should own the the game that you buy. The fact that games uh, game developers are able to just take back their game that you paid for is ridiculous. He's not disagreeing with them. He's just giving a law breakdown. He's having a very shitty a tone of a voice for now this. Now was an empire with 4,000 employees, and it was just too different of an environment from the 10 employee one he had helped build so many years ago. From then on, Thor started building his career as a full-time streamer and aspiring game developer. He quit his job at Amazon and 2016 also marked the release of his company's latest Champions of Breakfast, which was moderately successful for an indie game with 110 reviews on Steam. Okay. Next began his work on Heartbound, an RPG made in Game Maker. It's I currently still eight play years that in development game. and a demo exists on Steam. I still want to play that game. The music Paul's for all skills as a marketeer and personality started to work for him, and he created a successful Kickstarter campaign. As of 2024, the game is in active development, though the latest update was four months ago as a April Fool's joke. Game Maker, as the name implies, is a tool for making games. It's like RPG Maker, but more flexible. It's a great okay. tool for anyone to make a game and comes with both a drag and drop functionality and its own scripting language that's. Why did he just show a furry dragon? Why did he just show a furry for dragon? To make a game and comes with both a drag and drop function. What? What's the functionality point? Of this? And its own scripting language that's similar to Python. From 2016 onward, Thor's career as a full time video game long play streamer officially began. His personality and willingness to cover a variety of topics won him many viewers. Much of his yeah, success also. We, we, we've all seen Thor's shorts, man. They were blowing up all over YouTube, man. You could not escape the Thor. Came from his dedication and consistency. He would stream himself playing games 12 hours most days, 6 days a week. He then used his career as a successful Twitch streamer to subsidize his game development business. Aside from the nice profit of a streamer with millions of subscribers, he noted that when he streamed, his game sold four times as many copies as normal. His streaming business comfortably paid for his unprofitable gaming business. Okay, but to add to this, Thor was streaming forever before his YouTube career even took off. Like, he said he had, po had been posting YouTube shorts for over a year already, if I remember correctly, and they weren't doing anything. He was basically just another no-name streamer, right? And then suddenly, just completely randomly, the YouTube algorithm picked his uh, YouTube shorts up, and that's how he blew up from what I know, anyway. So, like, he literally was a no-name streamer before he was known. I don't think his game was selling better before he was known. By his own account, he has made less than $7.25 an hour for almost the last eight years, and the vast majority of his sales come from streaming. His content was extremely varied. He would play through games, offer life advice, comment on current events, and sometimes stream game maker scripting. One of the most common themes was teaching new developers how to get into the games industry too. However, his life was not all puzzles and industry challenges to be conquered. He lost his marriage in 2020, and he would begin to distance himself. He lost his marriage? Shows furry stuff on the screen. Okay. Okay. Early... Oh, 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 here on the right. On the right, I see why. I, c I can see why he's showing it. Sold by Maldivia's Fig Tree, which is um, Thor's alias, apparently. I mean, do we fucking know from when this is? You know? This could be from any time. ...experience in the industry. His tendency to comment on current events and unwillingness to engage with critics started to get him into hot water. Thor continued to diversify his business. Using connections forged through his career as a successful streamer, he created a game publishing company with Ludwig, not as a co-founder, but as its director and partner. Yeah, he did. Now for I the remember. fun this part. This is huge. Most people have heard of the Stop Killing Games campaign, but we'll- Yes. Yes. That's the one I was talking about earlier. The, I've forgotten the name about this one. This is, this is the one I was talking about earlier. And Thor is arguing against this one. Quickly cover it for the sake of completeness. Ludwig. Many full-price games are now yeah. live services. 
So, when the company is done supporting yeah, this, a game, this is the they video can by just the sky, kill their servers and the game is rendered unplayable for all buyers. This includes games with very little online functionality, but still ask a central server if it's, it's even allowed to run. Thank you. Ross is campaigning to require game developers to keep these games in a playable state of some form or another after um, official support has ended. This would be like, for example, a software developer deciding five years after you purchase a lifetime license that you no longer have access to it. Now, nobody likes their software relying on a central server to run when it doesn't need to. However, yeah. this is where the controversy begins. <laughs> Jason disagrees with the campaign and believes it will place undue burden on game developers, and most users do not understand game development enough to have an informed opinion. Many users believe he didn't understand what was being asked, and asked if he'd like to talk to Ross directly so they can reach some sort of understanding. Jason, obviously, declined, as he considers Ross Scott to be disingenuous and not worth addressing with his 20 years of experience in the games industry. This was easily the most controversial part of his reasoning. Ross is widely considered to be extremely principled, so an attack on his character was met with strict scrutiny of Jason Hall's character. Interesting. I haven't seen him actually speak out about this. This is the part I think is valid, but... Um... Where's the receipts? Like, he's saying this, but where's the receipts that Thor actually said that? Like, I, I want to see the receipts. Did Thor say this in a tweet? Did he say it on stream? Did he say it... Keep Jason going? Okay, would okay. later spend most of a day cleaning up comments he considered to be hateful towards him. There's also a debate of whether or not doing QA counts as game development, or being in the industry even though it's not strictly developing the game. Windows 10 is a piece of garbage that I've been QA testing for the last five years. Maybe it makes me stupid because I don't want to learn Linux, but I don't think that makes me a Windows developer. Now that brings up a good question. Does writing a Python script to ban users count as game development? Does filing bug reports for developers to fix? Game companies do hire game testers, but it's up to personal opinion if his previous experience can be advertised as 20 years in the industry. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want to go back to that. I want to go Beta. back to this. Whether or not doing QA counts as game development, or being in the industry even though it's not strictly developing the game. Windows. God damn it, I can't read this properly because of the... Whether or not start, doing QA yeah. counts as game development, or being in the industry even though it's not strictly developing the game. Windows 10 is One day during our... Okay, I'll just make it smaller. One day during our shift, we were told a critical task had come in and we all needed to be on it immediately. The task sheet was on paper and had like 30 or so steps. We were told to read the entire thing and then perform the task. Reading through... I found a step in the middle that said to turn off my computer, stand up and leave the room. After fully reading the rest of the sheet, I did so. The last two people on my team to do so were fired and the rest of us went to day crew. My pay was then reduced by 50 cents per hour due to no longer having an eye crew differential. I'm very happy to be an indie dev today. The fuck? People did report that their comments got auto-deleted containing certain words. Like what? On... On his video? Or where? Comments he considered to be hateful towards him. There's also a debate of... Whether or not doing QA counts as game development, or being in the industry even though it's not strictly developing the game. Windows 10 is a piece of garbage that I've been QA testing for the last five years. Maybe it makes me stupid because I don't want to learn Linux, but I don't think that makes me a Windows developer. If author here, if YouTube make or this person here Pets Cabin is saying he's been QA testing Windows 10 because he's been using Windows 10 for 10 years. This is a very shitty comparison because QA assurance, like quality assurance, is actually a very true fucking role. He thought said some snarky comments at one point, I think, and deleted it quickly. So much pretty. He has less than double digits in the game industry. Yeah. Now that brings up a good question. Does writing a Python script to ban users count as game development? Does filing bug reports for developers to fix? Game companies 
do hire game testers, but it's up to personal opinion if his previous experience can be advertised as 20 years in the industry in good faith. It doesn't seem to lend the credibility to his statements that he would like from the 20 years in the industry. Normally, this would not be an important point, but it's these 20... He's saying 20 years in the gaming industry. He doesn't just say industry and tech and shit. He's saying overall. 20 years in the industry that he uses as proof of his authority. And yes, he is like upscaling it a tiny bit from like 16 to 20 years, but... Bro, if bro is actually a furry, like if war actually is a furry, it's, I can very much believe that he's taught himself Python. I can very much believe that. And his authority is what proves what he says is true. His choice of thumbnail was also inflammatory, which, while funny, I don't think he should be able to turn around and complain that users are being mean to him. If you're thank you, Nugs, for the uh, for the sub. Thank you, thank you. Leveling shit over a wall. Sunders Core Nugs just <laughs> subscribed. <laughs> Brian being slow. You complain that users are being mean to him. If you're shoveling shit over a wall, expect some to be thrown back at you. This is reminiscent of Yandere Dev's frequent complaint that he was also forced to spend so much time responding to users as if it were completely against his will what he did with his time. Also, adding even more fuel to the f In my opinion, that's not a problem that he's upscaling. You gotta sell yourself as a person as long as it's not a huge stretch. I agree with that. I agree with that. 100%. And yeah, down there a death mentioned, man. Fire. Ross's response to the video was deleted. Users asked if this was deleted on purpose or an issue with YouTube's filters, and the response was vague and non-committal. He claimed he did not ban Ross from his channel. Very few users were asking if he was banned, and the question of if his post was deleted remains unanswered. This did not do much to calm users down. He became defensive. Men I... I can't say that this video was made in good faith either. Like, this video seems to be made in real bad faith. Like, obviously, he seems to be having some sort of fucking issue with Thor. But at the same time, he's not showing any fucking receipts. He's not showing the receipts. The things he's been showing in the background mostly were of no relevance to the things he was talking to on hand off. Like, show us the shorts. Show us the clips. Show us the tweets. And if his defense is going to be like, but I don't want to get copyright striked or anything, Bitch, you got 200 subs. This this video ain't monetized. You can't say this. This video ain't monetized. He, this video wasn't made with the YouTube logic behind. He could have shown receipts. Just to, like, get that out of the way. He could have shown receipts. And I don't see any receipts. Mentioned ...that he had to spend so much of his time deleting comments, pointing to the questionable time management skills that he apparently has. It's unknown if the collateral damage may... Maybe he has a team who's working on his YouTube. Maybe he has an editor who's working on his YouTube and is deleting comments. We don't know this either. They've included Ross's comment. But as attacks on Jason's character continued, users questioned if he was defensive of live service games because he helped create a publishing company, Off Brand Games, whose flagship. The main proof he showed, I guess, is the vague responses or rather lack of following up. ...game will be a Maybe, live service yeah. game with microtransactions that he will be forced to allow players to continue playing in offline mode after the servers eventually shut down. They wondered if he had gotten his jobs at Blizzard and Amazon because of his skill or because his dad was a giant in the field. Now, what does the future hold for the PirateSoft brand and channel? So it does end up trying to dance around the subject a lot, that much does seem apparent. I haven't seen it though, like, personally, I haven't been looking for it either, so I'm not saying it's not true, but I'm also not saying that it is true. I'm, I'm just trying to keep an open mind regarding this. Well, it's uncertain. This could be like, a small bump in the- Personally, I'm disagreeing with whatever the fuck Thor has to say in regards of uh, the Stop Killing ca Games campaign, because I agree with the Stop Killing Games campaign. We literally- if we pay for something, we have the right to keep it. That's my fucking stance on this. If I pay for a game, I have the right to play this game 20 years in the fucking future. The road for a growing channel. However, there's a pattern of game developers uh, who spend ages on a game, can't take criticism, 
uh, especially as they spiral for years. It's happened to bigger developers with bigger channels. I would love seeing Osman react to this video, actually. Well, he'll probably be fine as long as he doesn't make a debunk list. Ah, shit. I'd actually love seeing Osman uh, uh, react to this video. Uh, here you go, chat. Here's that video. I... Yandere Dev spotted. <laughs> All I remember is that he draws boxes. Yeah. All I remember is that he has the, uh, the MS Paint in the background and draws boxes. Twenty years in gaming, and I want to be, I want to be a compromise. I got a job as QA tester at my dad's company instead. Okay. Your voice audio has a lot of white noise. Okay. He knows a little bit more about the game industry than you do, pal, because he invented it. And then he perfected it so that no living developer could be best him in the ring of gaming. Okay. I work for Pirates of the He is a fairy? Should be the title! Oh my god, you are so fucking right! Holy shit! Oh my god, Greg. Holy shit, you should be a YouTuber instead, man. You honestly should be a YouTuber instead. Holy shit! I love how Pirate Software uses FX on his mic to make a deep voice as if to show he is a real boss. What is he even trying to say? The that's just his microphone! That's just the streamer microphone, man! That's just the fucking sure microphone! Holy shit, what are you even saying? I think the last two points are valid since he refused to simply chat with Jason. Yeah, that that point I do agree with. Like, why not actually chat with him and talk about it? You're starting the Stop Killing Games petition, yeah. And that Yandere Dev had a lot of similar attributes just to end up, well, the way he is now. Second one is uh, nothing concrete, but there are red flags that were dismissed before. <laughs> Moldavia's Victory is such a funny name, though. Oh my god, I agree. That is a funny name. <laughs> uh, bro seems to really be having it out for furries, though. This bro seems to be really having it out for furries. On the <laughs> chat, look, speaking of Thor. Th speaking of Thor. Huh? Let me go you to know his what players channel. want? Let me go to his, to his channel. No, no, no. Do you know no, what I players want, want? No, I want to go to his channel itself. I want to see the latest videos. SSN hack. Store citizen. Say no. Twitch app. Game studio. Gambles. Data selling. AI companion. Windows. He's live right now. Honestly, I even find this persona kind of creative. If it's nothing sexual, I think it's fine. I agree with that. Like, I don't think... Like, I don't share the same thing that people outside of the furry fandom think that of being a furry is something inherently sexual. It just isn't. 